Yes, I'm here. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. How much longer on the break? Join us at Wembley with the arrival of the teams. England in the white nearest us with those three new caps Steve Coppel, Peter Barnes, and Bob Latchford. The Italians on the far side. A formidable task indeed for England facing this Italian side who are said to be on £6,000 bonus per man for qualifying for the World Cup finals in Argentina. The referee at the front there is Karolai Palatai from Hungary, who certainly knows both sides of the game. He played 26 times for Hungary and has refereed a European Cup final up in Glasgow and indeed the Scotland-England game two seasons ago at Hampden Park. Tremendous atmosphere here, as you would expect. It's a good ground for the Italians, this. They got a draw here in 1959-2-2. They came in 1973, and they won by a goal to nil. And indeed, England have not beaten Italy at home since a 2-0 victory at uh, White Hart Lane in 1949. The Italians, who trained on this Wembley pitch last night, looked very sharp and almost mean very very businesslike the teams to be presented to his royal highness the duke of kent who is the president of the football association and the national anthem
vocal support means anything, it's a great start for England. Although, of course, the Italians are used more than most to playing in front of noisy, volatile crowds. They look confident as they are presented to His Royal Highness the Duke of Kent. That's Bettega he's just shaken hands with. There's Dino Zoff, the 35-year-old goalkeeper, and as Jack Charlton was saying a moment ago, we could do with a goalkeeper not to have a blinder here for once in a while. You saw Antonioni there just a moment ago. The turn of the England players now with their skipper, Emlyn Hughes, making his 50th appearance for England tonight. And Ray Clements. Trevor Cherry there. And as Ron Greenwood uh, has picked what he calls He's gambled a little bit on this side with men who are going to throw everything at the Italians. Koppel and Barnes and Keegan and Latchford all up there. We've got to have a go at them, he said, and uh, I think everybody would agree with those sentiments to try and unsettle the Italians where the first quarter of an hour of the game could mean so much. If England can make that breakthrough and unsettle the Italians who are so professional and strike once or maybe even twice before half-time. Who's to say that we're not going to get a night that we'll be proud to tell our grandchildren about? So, the formalities are over. And an England side that really has a job to do. Three new caps in it, as I say. Steve Koppel, the number eight. Bob Latchford in tremendous form with Everton with 12 goals this season and Peter Barnes, the number 11. And a back four, really, that is, or a defence that has played uh, well over the last few games. They've conceded only five in the last nine internationals. But the Italians have the one thing that England do not have at the moment, and that is a settled side. This, in fact, is their side coming up here now that played uh, a 2-1 defeat against West Germany, the world champions, and then thundered six against the Finns in such a vital World Cup qualifying game. They really uh, have a nice settled side. Roberto Bettega, one of the Juventus men, and there are nine of that team who come either from Juventus or Torino. There have been uh, question marks certainly about the form of one or two of them. Dino's off is one. But what a night for Peter Barnes. Here he is. His father, Ken Barnes, of course, played with great distinction for Manchester City, and he's here in the crowd tonight. Bob Latchford, in fact, uh, I wonder if he remembers that his last appearance in London brought him four goals, just down the road from here, in fact, in an Everton victory at Queen's Park Rangers. But uh, Dino's off, this incredible Italian goalkeeper, 35 years old, and uh, it's his form the Italians have been a little bit worried about, and... Uh, while everybody looked so efficient last night, it was he who seemed a little bit out of sorts with himself. But a tremendous character, 59 caps. Well, the toss-up has gone. And Italy will be attacking the goal to our left. But what I think is more relevant is that we hope that England will be attacking hard the goal to our right, wearing white. Italian uh, team photograph. The fair-haired fellow on the left is a team that really believes it's on its way to Argentina, but we shall see. Steve Popper. Manchester United fans will be delighted and many more will be delighted to see him get a chance at last. Patrolling down that right touchline, Barnes over on the left. But he'll also be expected to do his share of work in the midfield as well. So Mr. Palatai from Hungary gets the game underway. 
Italy attacking the goal to our left and Tardelli in possession for them right now. Calcio flicking it inside, Hughes drinking and shuffling. Playing it patiently here for Dave Watson. And now for Phil Neal. England have scored only 11 goals in the last 11 internationals and five of those were here against Little Luxembourg. It really is a night when that record must be improved. This is Gentile. A little touch to better than. And the Italian fans raise their voices already as a nice passing movement develops. Here's Graziani. Gentile again. Back for Graziani. And Dave Watson really didn't get that away. Bettiger a half slip. And now Antonioni. Good challenge though. That time by Dave Watson. And here's Trevor Brocky. With a crowd giving him all he's got. Bonetti is after him. And now here's Kevin Keegan. Brocky. How we need a good early start. And we very nearly. As Barnes came rifling in there. It was taken off his toes. And now a throw. The ball coming off Steve Koppel. Claudio Gentile with the throw. Here's Roberto Bettiger, a man who scored four goals against Finland. Here's Keegan, though, for England. A touch for Phil Neal. Useful cross. But a slip by Bob Latchford. And Tardelli with Barnes chasing him. Antonioni. But Brooking getting past the challenge of Benetti. Calling up Peter Barnes. Ray Wilkins. Barnes again. Now, can he dance past Tardelli? He can't. Hughes. Italians are used to pressure. They've brought everybody back behind the ball. The Italian half of the field is massed with blue shirts. Here's Koppel. Crowd shouting attack, attack, and Koppel's doing that. A little touch there of Chucks and a shot by Koppel, but over the top. Koppel coming in there, a nice little touch off, but Koppel had to readjust a little too quickly than he was capable of doing. So Dino's off with a goal kick for Italy. Bettiger's header, Watson, Latchford, Benetti in there for Italy. Here's Facchetti, 35 years old, Emlyn Hughes. Keegan very active up front now coming trying to come off his man the number eight Zaccarelli he's the man who will be marking Keegan so they think number eight uh, Zaccarelli Watson planting it forward Barnes is in there but Italian defence was equal to that Tardelli getting it away Graziani to Benetti Tardelli Graziani to Casio. Antonioni to Graziani. Oh, and Petticus in there! And Phil Neal did a marvellous saving job for England. We were all over the place in defence, and Petticus really missed a chance of giving Italy a shock lead there with less than five minutes gone. Well, that was a heart stopping moment, and let's hope that uh, the English defence cover a little better than that in the 85 minutes that are left really I'm surprised that the number 11 Bettiger didn't make more of that opportunity here's Keegan Neil certainly saved England's embarrassment there Brooking going well, going a long way and going well Tardelli stopping him but at the expense of a corner for England Great run by Brooking, really attacking the opposition. Dave Watson up for this one on the edge of the Italian penalty area. Latchford and Barnes are poised there as well. Keegan by the near post. There's Dave Watson.
being watched by Mozzini. Curl in there and straight into the arms of Dinozov. Trevor Cherry and a free kick a bit of nudging there I think by uh, Steve Popple any comments so far Jack? I would have thought they would have done a bit more of that well we missed the first part of that comment we'll pick that up in a moment Jack here's Pacchetti I think the Italians felt that was a handball, but it looked an accidental one there by Phil Neal. Well, the Hungarian referee thought otherwise. The crowd are whistling, and Italy get a free kick just outside the area. Now, what sly move will they get up to here? Ray Clements, you can see on the left of the picture, organising that wall. Casio saying he wants the England side back 10 yards. And the Hungarian referee saying, get on with it. Antonioni is close beside him. Played though for Benetti. Goal kick. Now, Jack, let's have the point you were making. I was just thinking that Trevor Brooking's been running the ball at the Italian defence. With having Big Bob Latchford up there, I would have thought they would have played the ball over the top early on and see what he would get off them. At the moment, he hasn't had a ball, a ball to deal with, Bob, yet. Well, here's Hughes. Here's a gray in the long cross coming in. Well, there's one for Latchford to go for, but Mozzini got it away, but only as far as Keegan, and that was a good, strong, swift challenge by Zaccarelli. England throw. Cherry playing it short for Brooking. They're pulling a lot back, Jack, at the very slightest sniff of danger. Yeah, they're pulling a lot of people back. And the, with having Bob Latchford up there, I thought they would have tried to clear him a little bit quicker than they're doing at the moment. The build-up's a little bit too slow at the moment. And the Italians are allowed to get back behind the ball. But you can, you can handle that if you sling it over the top of them and let Bob compete and back him up. And I think this is something we've got to try very soon. Latchford uh, was beaten to that one. I must say, Mozzini got in very, very quickly. Well aware of Latchford's danger. Hughes planting it forward again. Latchford gone to that side. Mozzini is right there with him. Barnes trying to make an impression. And again, the Italians get to it first, but it's now Ray Wilkins for England. Popple, supported by Neil. A little one-two with Trevor Brooking. Can Popple get there? Well, he bounced off Gentili, who's a tough one. And Gentili comes away and finds Antonioni. Dave Watson, a long way back. Well, Benetti was chasing and chopping after the big number five there. And the crowd didn't like Benetti's tactics. Neil, long searching ball, and it finds Keeper. Popple. Brooking, and again, Benetti there. Just look at the speed of that tackling. Romeo Benetti. An England throw. Well, we wanted something in the opening... No, it's an Italian throw. We wanted something in the opening quarter of an hour to unsettle them, and ten minutes of that quarter of an hour have gone. Still nil-nil. Here's Giacinto Pacchetti. Antonioni, Graziani, 
Antonioni, beautiful control by Antonioni and here's Roberto Bettega. Antonioni, oh that cannoned off an Englishman and behind Bettega. Ray Wilkins. First appearance for England was against the Italians in New York and he played superbly that night when England won 3-2. Brooking, Wilkins, Brooking, Neil wanting a bit of the action wide, but Brooking curling that in again towards Kevin Keegan! The England goal that we wanted, and Keegan is the scorer! Well, that is the start. Keegan, the scorer, beautifully taken with his head, outwitting the Italians in defence. What a cross by Brooking! What a sight for England, beyond Dino's off, 1-0. And if you want to look at it again from behind, and why not? There's Keegan's header, there's the despairing dive of Zoff, and there's the ball in the back of the net. Calcio, Emlyn Hughes getting in there, now. Just supposing we can build on that. Here's Benetti. Here's Antonioni. Good tackle there, but didn't quite come off for Phil Neal. Antonioni again. Brooking, what a lovely cross it was by him that led to that goal. And here's Keegan again from that pass by Hughes. Oh, shoved off the ball, they won't get away with, yes, an advantage played by the referee. Good piece of refereeing, even though it didn't come England's way, but uh, a sight, really, that Zaccarelli there was pushing Keegan off the ball in his anxiety. There's the tussle going on as Keegan tried to get past him. That's where the referee decided to play the advantage, and in the refereeing terms, that was a good decision. Now, Watson up, winning it in the air. Calcio beaten by Cherry, but here's Calcio. Tardelli's gone outside him. Here's Antonioni. Now, what's he given there? A corner? No goal kick. Antonioni, the captain of Fiorentina, the golden boy of Italian football, not at all happy with that uh, refereeing decision. But here's Hughes for England. Here's Brooking, taken down by Benetti, who left his leg there. The Hungarian referee will want to have a word with him about that, which he does. But England have no time to pause and consider. They want to keep pressurizing these Italians. Graziani, meanwhile, is off the field getting some treatment. And it's another throw for England. Still Graziani getting some treatment over by the centre flag there. I don't know whether he must have taken a knock in the face when Nitelli got on the attack there. There's a cross coming in again, and this time Mozzini is there. Barnes couldn't get the rebound, and Casio got it away. Neil, everybody in that third of the field now. Exciting times, Jack. Yeah, it was a good goal. I've been watching the Italians and they've been pushing people out wide and getting very close to the wingers to stop them playing the ball in. And that time, Brooking and Keegan worked it well between them. It's important that Bob Latchford hangs outside the far post a lot. It gives Keegan a little bit of room to come and do exactly what he did there, which was a near post run. A great ball from Brooking in at the near post, which got England to go. And they'll do it again if they, if they persist in it. Well, that's the spirit now as Brooking takes it up again. Free kick. Well, by Brooking that time on Benetti. Pacchetti, 93 caps for Italy, the most in Italian football history with that long, long free kick. Here's Benetti. Free kick again, a foul by Cherry on Benetti. He was a little high on the Italian. And Graziani getting a bandage around his head at this uh, point. It's 
quite a blow for the Italians. Meanwhile, it's uh, Antonioni who's going to take this free kick. Deflected. And with 15 minutes gone, England leading by one goal to nil, scored by Kevin Keegan. Latchford. Keegan. And an England throw. Graziani back on the field again, his head heavily bandaged. Barnes, Brooking. That's an interesting cross as well. Bacati got in the way of it, and it's a corner again for England. Brooking at the moment looking in particularly good form for England. It's interesting with Trevor Brooking, he seems to have been given a free roll in midfield to go and find the position he likes best, which is exactly what I would have done with him because he's, he's so good at this sort of a job. Right, it's Keegan. Here's the corner for England. Dave Watson was right in there. In fact, it was Popple with the corner. Now Hughes. Bill Neal on that far side. And the linesman flagging on this side for an offside against Keegan. He's still got his flag up. Now he's put it down. Cherry letting it run. Wilkins taking his time. Picking up uh, Bill Neal. Now Dave Watson. Neal again. Peter Barnes. Well, the two wingmen uh, combined well there. Popple getting that across beautifully, and Barnes getting there before anybody else, but forced to put it wide. He knows off with the kick. Watson with a header. Tardelli. Benetti. Antonioni. Way on the left, a lot of space for Gentini. Waiting a bit early there towards Casio. And now Popper. Oh, Gentini had a hack of him all right. raised his arm there to Popple in apology, but uh, that really wasn't the point of it all. There's Popple. Got Bill Neal wide on this touchdown. Here he is. Now, will the cross go in this time? Took a deflection! Oh, my goodness, Barnes! Oh, how did he miss it? Well, that really could be the turning point of so much. There were three men there who might have scored. In the end, none of them did. The deflection there unsettled the Italians. The header there didn't go in. Latchford couldn't touch it. Barnes, I thought, was going to get it in, but failed. Well, another goal then would have made it very, very interesting indeed. But this is certainly, if anything, can be judged by the opening uh, 20 minutes or so. It's a very, very much better England performance than we've seen for some time. I think they've been cut to the quick by the criticism of them. They know their pride is at stake as much as anything else. Watson in first. Latchford doing some challenging. Coppel there. Nice touch from Phil Neal. Coppel inside for Wilkins. Beautiful dummy. Left Benetti all over the place. Now it's Cherry. Here's Peter Barnes. We've not really seen one of his runs yet. Zaccarelli stopping him that time. Wilkins, Hughes. 
Cross coming in there, but uh, Paquetti, all of some six foot three, six foot four, was never likely to lose out on that. Here's Bettega. Calcio coming to this side of the field. Challenge there with Latchford. Now Popple. England throw. Wilkins, oh, a lovely touch. Neil. Well, he had it in his head to try a shot there, but he wanted to say something, Jack. Yeah, the Italians are a little bit nervous at the moment, and they're pulling people back, and they're not really getting people up in any numbers to support what they're, what they're giving away up front. England have got to be a little bit careful, though, because these people are very patient, and uh, they've got to watch that they're picking up all the people up front all the time. And one of their great qualities when they do break out, their passing is so very, very accurate. They break out with speed and with accuracy, but now it's England breaking forward again with Ray Wilkins. Steve Popper. Neil. And Hughes. The four for Antonioni. Graziani. Oh! Now there's the long legs of Dave Watson. calling Bettega to him Had a quick word with uh, Bettega and gave England the free kick another sign of anxiety perhaps in this Italian side Phil Neal shoved off it in fact by Keegan quite right, can't argue with that decision and again Casio now getting involved there with Keegan and Tardelli's there as well Mozzini there too well the Italians are getting a little bit excited and I like that. When you get the Italians excited, they don't play as well as they're capable of. And they're a little bit excited at the moment and I think England are playing well enough to get another goal before long. Well, let's hope you're right, Jack, as Zoff plays that ball high and forward. Well, now, here's Bettiger. That could be dangerous too, but... Can Casio turn this back? Cherry's gone across there and it goes off Trevor Cherry for the corner. Maybe just the slightest lapse in concentration there as they uh, had all their thoughts about coming forward. Normally Italian finishing is sharp and it's mean. Really there must be no loss of concentration for a moment. That's a goal kick though. Off Gentili. beaten by Mozzini Brooking going in hard throw going to Italy Wilkins now for England. Keegan trying to go wide. Good piece of uh, covering there though by Marco Tardelli. England leading 1-0 for those who've just joined us. The scorer Kevin Keegan. A header from uh, Trevor Brooking Cross. No foul there. What 
Robinson saying, leave it for me. The ball played now. Played up there for Bob Blackstone. Zaccarelli challenged too firmly from behind by Koppel. Nice to see Dave Watson in the mood he's in tonight. Dave's a great player and he's, he's really got his tail up tonight. He's really having a go at everything. At times, I wish Emblem would raise the pace of his game just a little bit. He tends to spend a lot of time on balls that are not going in midfield in the build-up in England. I wish he would just use it a little bit quicker. This is Calcio for Italy, with Tardelli making the run outside it. There's Hughes, now he's got the quick in his pace. And there's Dave Watson again for England. Hughes. Laying it back to his Liverpool clubmate, Raycombs. Wilkins. That's an Italy throw. to England though, foul by Roberto Vediga. Neil. Ashford's gone into the middle again, Keegan's up there with him. Now Popple, delightful chip. And Fichetti, yes, he doesn't even give the corner away on that occasion. Third wing. Steve Popple with it, here's Kevin Keegan. Oh, curl back nicely, but when Wilkins turn it back, he can't. Twenty-seven minutes gone, England one, Italy nil. We've got to keep pressurising and punishing the Italians. Keegan getting past Piketty, the long cross, but it's too high for anybody and too far forward for Barnes. But just the slightest uh, sign there, Jack, of Piketty having a little niggle at Keegan in his anxiety. Yes, he had just a little tap at his ankles as he went past, but he missed him. The referee let it go, and rightly so. But the Italians are famous for this. It's part of their business. They play it like we play passy games. Here's Watson. Ratchford now poised in the middle. Won't come to him though. But will it come for Ray Wilkins? Peter Barnes trying to scoop it up there, but Bacchett is there. And in fact, there was a knot of about six or seven Italian blue shirts in a matter of a few square yards. Now keep pushing them forward. There's Neil. Crowd giving him everything again. Wilkins gone up. And Bonetti turning it away. It's interesting that Peter Barnes is coming right across towards the near post almost every time England attacked on the right-hand side. And Trevor Cherry's going around the back. It'll be interesting if one of these balls ever clears Latchford and uh, gets onto Trevor because he's took up some good positions and the ball hasn't gone to him yet. Bonetti. Antonioni. Graziani, nice pass there by uh, Antonioni. To Italy, which the crowd don't like, a foul on Graziani. Graziani, his head bandage, he scored against England in New York, in fact, in that uh, bicentennial game when England came back from two down to win 3 2. 2 0. Piketty, nice skill, taking it on his chest. The long ball forward, looking for Casio. Cherry is up there.
Steve Koppel seems to have settled on a lot better to this game than Peter Barnes. Peter seems to have a little bit of difficulty at the moment in getting the ball down and giving himself enough room to go and have a go at his fullback. Jerry having a dig at uh, Casio there. And the Italians rightly getting a free kick for it. Nice little touch inside Gentile. A swift chance there by Cherry, and here's Peter Barnes. Now the first run by him, and oh, look what happened to him. Benetti is going to get the yellow card. The yellow card for Romeo Benetti for that challenge on Peter Barnes. And that won't be the first caution he's had in his career. Look at that challenge. He really meant to stop him. And England get a free kick. The first fleeting glimpse of Peter Barnes in full stride. And it worried the Italians. Neil with a shot well wide. Kevin Keegan was having a little word there with Neil about having that shot. It looked more than a little word, actually, Jack. Well, uh, probably a little more than a little word. But if there's anyone capable of knocking him in the back of the net from there, it's Neil. Because that's probably his most dangerous distance. Zaccarelli, number eight. Better goes, header. Hughes cutting it out. Alzio was trying to get in behind him. Barnes coming off his man on that occasion, looking for the ball, which is a good sign, but Hughes was going on. Here's Keegan. Now Peter Barnes, bit of space now. Will he take on Gentile? Yes, he has. He's passed him. He's passed another. He's passed another. Beautiful by Barnes. Oh, and he hit it straight at soft. That was much more like it from Peter Barnes, and I'm sure he's going to feel a lot, lot happier after that. He had them shuddering there for a moment or two. Past three defenders. I suppose the angle was always a little too fine to beat a uh, goalkeeper of Zoff's ability. Yes, Cherry is doing a bit of digging again on the far side there. Zaccarelli now. Here's Brooke. Here's Popper. Brooking's gone on. his cross again too high for Keegan but not for Mozzini it's looked very impressive the Italian number five Benetti Causio very deep indeed Antonioni now taking up the running on that far side Cherry right there with him I think this will be a back pass yes this is Wilkins Keegan's gone sprinting forward. Brooking. Just a swift glance and an accurate pass for Koppel. Koppel's passed his man. We're getting past them wide at the moment and there's a corner off Benetti. So England's corner. Watson up again. Needing another goal before half-time. 
played for Phil Neal. Casio short, that was coolness. Back to Facchetti. Only Gazzani, Gazziani is up. Cherry on this side. Wilkins. Neil. Rooking with Bonetti at him again, snapping and snapping. And a throw to Italy. Tremendous goalkeeper Dino Zoff, even back in 1972 he cost Juventus £280,000 when they bought him from Naples. Great bonkers. Watson winning it well in the air from Graziani. Gentile's header, now composed with Calcio, slip wide, he can, he's gone past Hughes. Got Cherry after him, Wilkins is after him as well, the long cross will come to nothing. Franco Casio, yes Jack. Steve Koppel looks a lot more effective on the right hand side of the field when, when instead of people coming towards him, they, they stay away from him and let him go on with the job. He's a great little player who's going at people. Here's Hughes, Latchford. Barnes. Getting into the mood of things a little bit now, I think, Peter Barnes. Koppel. Barnes again, the little touch, safe for Neil. Wilkins. So little space in there, though. And that time, Zaccarelli got it away. Watson. Touch for Cherry. Neil. Central position there. Hughes. Little chip in again towards uh, Bob Latchford. No foul. Keegan's after it. Oh, my word! That was an elbow in the face by Tardelli. He's got to go off for that, surely. Tardelli clearly punched Keegan in the face with his elbow. Well, what's going to happen here? Now, can we see it from this angle? It looks a little as though it might not be the right angle. But as they went for the ball, now, what's going to happen? Well, I think nothing has happened. But Keegan is out. And that's what did it. Fred Street tending to Kevin Keegan, here it is again, look at that elbow, straight in the face, intentional too. I don't know how fullbacks can think about doing things like that when they're actually running to compete for a ball. Obviously he felt that Kevin was going to get there just a little bit before him, and uh, it was a nasty one. They obviously think that action should have been taken, I saw him do, I mean, did he give any action to, I was watching the slow motion there Jack, did he give a yellow card or anything? No, to... I've never seen any yellow card at all, and uh, as far as I can see he's let him away with it. In my book Tardelli should have been off the field. Well the linesman said nothing and he was stood watching the whole business. Disgraceful, and there's the free kick, and there's the catch and the drop by Soft, and he got it, second time. Well, Keegan's all right again in all that, as uh, you would have gathered. Here's Barnes. Antonioni. And Hughes safely back to Ray Clements. Watson. What about that? And Zoff there, fractionally before Ray Wilkins. Actually, it was a very sensible wall out by Dave Watson, and he just gave it a little bit too much, otherwise Dave Wilkins would have been through on that one. 
because Fischetti had gone the wrong way altogether. He had gone square, expecting a ball to be played along the ground, and in fact, it went over the top of him. Betega. Zaccarelli. Calcio trying to get in there, but Trevor Cherry was there before him. This is Gentile. Now Betega. Doesn't let him get too close to goal. Graziani with the shot, good save, the first one he's had to make, Ray Clements, and he was more than equal to it. Now Koppel, stopped though by Zaccarelli. Renato Zaccarelli of Torino. Phil Neal. A little chip in for Keegan. Now, what sort of punishments are you going to get this time from Tardelli? Got him worried. He's got him worried. And we've got a corner. Oh, Keegan responding now. Now, he shouldn't do that. Fichetti getting in there. Yellow card. Well, that... In the first place, Keegan shouldn't have done it. But certainly if Tardelli got off Scott free for what he did, and look at Tardelli smiling at Keegan... Corner then to England. Peter Barnes is going to take it. Now Wilkins on the volley. How does he make? I think Kevin was a little unlucky there. I think he went to push him away and in fact he pushed him in the face which made it look a lot worse than in fact it was. But like you say, you can't raise your hands to people in this game. And you must not raise your hands to people at this point. Certainly the crowd are far from happy with Tardelli's treatment of uh, Kevin Keegan though. Here's Bettega for Italy. Antonioni who has some beautiful touches. Zaccarelli. Antonioni. Cut out again by Dave Watson. As Jack said earlier, what a game he's having. And here's the ball for Latchford. Pacchetti is across. The bounce went for him. And a little chip found Zaccarelli. Beautiful skill. Now. Well, Zaccarelli has gone down poleaxed as though Neil struck him on that occasion. Well, the uh, trainer's being called on. In fact, three of them are coming on. And Mr. Pelletai is saying if he wants treatment, he'd have to go off. Well, it may have been a wild swinging arm there, but certainly it didn't appear to me, and this is not being biased, that didn't appear to be an intentional slap by uh, Phil Neal, Jack. I didn't see any slap at all. In fact, I thought that he made up his mind that he had been slapped about two yards too late, and it looked a dreadful bit of gamesmanship for me. He might have actually caught Phil Neal's face as he turned and went past, but there was certainly no contact with any arm. But it's typical Italian-type stuff. Well, it's funny the way they come on, they come on like there's invasion. Yes, there must have been four trainers coming on. And the atmosphere warming up still more. Zaccarelli, the injured man, it looks as though he's got uh, a knock on the chin there, though. It'll be a free kick to Italy. Come to the last couple of minutes of the first half. Paquetti with the kick. Played short to Graziani on the ground. Neil. Keegan very busy up front. And Trevor Brooking following up well now. Bonetti right there with him. Brooking has seen him off though, but uh, he couldn't see off the four. Oh. And Paquetti had a go at uh, Brooking while he was on the ground, then helps him to his feet. As Causio now takes it up, finds Zaccarelli. Causio, no, behind him. Peter Barnes right back there. Now, let's see Peter go. Well, he's got past Gentili. Oh, my word! The referee feeling for the card, and it's a yellow one for Gentili. My word, how much more of this have they got to put up with? There's Peter Barnes. Gentile knew that he couldn't get him. And now what's going through the Italian's mind? That. 
No way in the world he could have played the ball there, Jack. Well, it was very close, and I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. He wasn't that far away from a ball running away from him, actually. You're a generous man. It's a free kick for England. Brooking with it. Latchford there. Oh, and Watson almost got in. But the linesman had his flag up on this side of the field. Dave Watson would have been offside. But Latchford should have scored. I don't think he realised how much time he had there. And in fact, if he had taken his time, he would have planted that in the back of the net. And I've seen Bob do that so many times before that I couldn't understand him missing that one. That was the best chance of the game. And that's what he's in the side for, his ability in the air as much as anything. So, Zoff with a kick for Italy as we come to the last seconds of the first half. England leading by a goal to nil. And heaven knows there's a lot of football to be played in this second half. Wilkins. Keegan turning tight any well. A touch for Latchford. But the slightest mistake and the Italians are pouncing on it. Here's Popple now. Touch for Phil Neal, played in quickly, off Bonetti for another English corner. It would have been interesting to see what would have happened had better now done really for that ball, instead of just trying to block it. Barnes with the corner. Neal with the cross. And Latchford was right in there, but it's a goal kick. There's Neil's cross, Latchford with the header, yes, a goal kick. At stages in the game, England have looked really dangerous when they played the ball wide and have slung these crosses in, because there's a lot of pushing and a lot of barging going on inside that box. Half time, England leading then in this World Cup qualifier by a goal to nil, having had much the better of the first half, and as the players go off, we are going to take a short break. And after that break, you'll be getting the views again of Jack Charlton and Alan Mallory as well with Jerry Harrison. We'll be right back after this break. Jack. Hi, bigger. Right, two, two things we're looking at. If we look at the goal, that's in slow mo as well. Uh, and we're looking at the little run of Barnes uh, where he beat three players and he didn't pull it back. So uh, I'll come, come to you first, Alan, because uh, he's had a go. And we'll, we'll get, you know, what do you think the miracle looked on for, to start with? Some great tackling, isn't it? Or Okay, in the moment, we'll be rejoining Brian Moore for the whole of the second half. For the whole of the second half, I don't say don't go away, we'll be back in a moment. Yeah. The use of the new lads, are, and we're finishing on the line. That I mean, all right, they they look a bit uh, excitable and kicking a few people, but they're still just as dangerous on the etc. etc. But they've only what they've only had a couple of shots. Same what, Jack? Yeah, yeah, first, 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 yeah. He should have scored one, Phil Needle's got two on his chest, and he was out of the Phil on the right side. Yes, I can. Okay, fine. 
I tell you what, when we, when we do the goal, if we can, if you you lead into the you lead into the goal, and you perhaps uh, pick it up on. That's right. I'm talking to the lads. I'm talking to the lads. Can you hear me? Well, I'll, I'll say you know it was a brilliant start though. I mean that lovely goal, ten minutes here. You got me? Yeah. Let's. Sorry, say it again. Okay, fine. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome back to Wembley. The players at the moment in the middle of their half-time break. We've already Welcome back to Wembley. The players at the moment in the middle of their half-time break. We've already heard a few words of uh, encouragement and optimism from Jack Charlton. Alan, what do you think? The miracle looked on for the moment. It did at the beginning, Jerry. I must admit, yeah, we looked very sharp. We took the goal very, very well, and we missed a couple of half chances through the game. And if we had knocked those in, then uh, who knows? You never know. We could have done it. It was a brilliant start. That goal, uh, Jack. Yeah, well, it, uh, that's why they played Bob Latchford because Bob is going to the far post and taking people there with him. And then Kevin Keegan's making runs to the near post, and so is Peter Barnes coming right across and making runs in there at the near post. In fact, Peter. Yeah, perhaps we could have a look at that uh, and pick up the good points in that one, uh, Alan, because it was a marvelous. It was, it was a bit different from our normal sort of effort, uh, Jerry, wasn't it? You know, it was, the ball comes out wide. You know, it was a good position, and he knocks a near post ball in. Trevor Brookin. You know, great near post ball. Kevin Keegan, a super header. You know, super header, no chance at all. But a great near post ball, which is a bit different to what no we normally do in England, isn't it? Far post stuff all the time. And the point you made, uh, Jack, that uh, Bob Latchford was making space for him and allowing him to make these runs in. I thought it was planned uh, early on, you know, because Peter Barnes especially has is, is been coming into these positions. But Kevin took this near post position up. But Peter Barnes has come in on two occasions. In one, he hit wide of the near post, he came in, and another one yeah, was blocked. Hit it with his yeah. left foot, didn't he? Hit it with his he left foot, his right foot. Wide, yeah. yeah. What about the new lads, uh, Steve Coppel and uh, Peter well, Barnes? Well, I, I think, you know, if anybody's going to win us the game and win it well, I think it's going to be Stevie Coppel. Because every time he's got the ball and gone wide and taken people on it, he's, he's murdered anybody that's picked him up. Yeah. Uh, Peter Barnes looks a bit, a little bit apprehensive at the moment. He's, he's had some good one things. Lovely and, one. And in between, yes. Lovely run that he made. Super, there, I mean, great composure yeah. after he missed the chance. He, yeah. He, yeah. he picked up a ball and he beat three people in the space yeah. of about five or six yards. Yeah, let's have a look at that one. Not a, a position. Here, a lot of, you know, a lot of skill now. He's at one and two, and they both try to kick him and three. And now he doesn't have a look up. He doesn't have a look up to see where people are. He just smashes the ball. Uh, tries to smash it even for goal across the face of the goal. But if, uh, if if you go back again, you can see Wilkins is waiting there to knock it in the back of the net. But nevertheless, Jack, the terrific uh, danger if they're going to break quickly. Well, they are. I mean, that's the Italian game. They pull people behind the ball and then they knock it out and the midfield pick it up and then they feed the forward players and they back them up very quickly. And uh, Jack. they've had a couple of good chances. Thanks very much. We'll be back with the whole of the second half in a few moments, uh, but uh, with Brian Moore. See you later.
I believe, but uh, no fuckers listening. And every time, on the, on the three or four occasions, you've got one for one. This place is chicken fast, it's one of those easiest parts. And we still got people running behind you. Still got people running behind you. Yes, I do, Roy. Going all right for you, is it? Is it going all right for you? Come on, cheer up, cheer up. Got to keep us going. Entertained during the halftime interview by the band of the Combined Guards Division. I think it's probably worth uh, just reminding you of the situation in the group uh, where goal difference is so important. If England win tonight by one goal or by two goals, in fact, it means that Italy then have to beat Luxembourg by a solitary goal when they come to play in Rome on December the 3rd. If England manage to win by three goals, then Italy will also have to win by 3-0 against Luxembourg. Is it asking too much if we win by 4-0? Then, of course, Italy might be in a bit of trouble. Then they would have to go chasing a 5-0 victory against Luxembourg. As it stands at the moment, if England win 1-0, it simply means that Italy have to beat Luxembourg by that solitary goal in the last game in this group, which, of course, should by no means be beyond them. But I think one of the great things about, and I think Jack Charlton will probably agree, is that it has been so much more convincing this England performance in the first 45 minutes. It's probably the best performance we've seen from England maybe over the last couple of years. Yeah, I think so. Uh, but Italy had a very easy team to pin down to, uh, and how to play against them and how to mark against. They don't change their pattern. They play the same pattern in every international that I can remember for the last 20 years anyway. They've good individual players in this situation, but it's an e they're an easy team to pick up and stop playing if you do your job right. And the England job has been done right at the back tonight. They've left just three at the back and uh, picked up man for man, which is really the front three of Italy have done nothing at all. The danger has come from the midfield players making a break on the odd occasion to support those up front. But all in all, it's been a very good England performance at the moment. And it's nice to see the lads with their tails up looking as if they can play when people have said for so long we can't. In, a, in an ideal world, from uh, an England footballing point of view, we really need two more goals in the second half. Yeah, and it's, it's not beyond the realms of possibility now, having seen the first half, because we know where, I'm sure Ron Greenwood knows where he's causing problems, 
and he'll be saying to the England lads at the moment, get out there and cause them some more problems by where they're playing the ball in these areas. And uh, I can see England probably getting another goal, and with a bit of luck, maybe another one after that, which we hope would set the Italians a problem or two in the last match. Well, the England team are getting a tremendous reception from the Wembley crowd. They've appreciated something to cheer at last. And certainly in that first 45 minutes, uh, an awful lot of pride has come back into the English game. And if by any chance they beat the Italians tonight but don't qualify, it's a rather sad state of affairs that they've lost just one match in their qualifying group, but don't go to Argentina. Dave Watson, the number five there, just going out of the picture on the right. Well, he has had maybe his best game for England. As Jack said early on, he really seemed to be in the mood. He was only too delighted to make tremendous runs forward and always had the beating of Graziani in the air, even before Graziani uh, had his head injury. So what we've got to look for and what England have got to search for in the 45 minutes that remain are two more goals. The Italians, in fact, have got a number 15 on the field. Claudio Sala, they've taken Graziani off, so there's Claudio Sala, Graziani, the man who injured his head in the first half, is off the field. As a brother, also plays for Torino, Patrizio Sala, he's a striker. It'll be interesting, Brian, to see whether this fill the space up behind the fullback that Steve Cobble's attacking this half. I felt in the first half that people were making runs through those areas that he wanted to use. I think Ron will probably have told them to stay out of there and leave it to Steve to get on and do the job. Because he's certainly got the beating of this fullback when he wants to go at him. We should watch for that. England preparing to kick off. One goal to nil in the lead, scored by Kevin Keegan. Which was one of the gambles that Ron Greenwood took. He saw him in tremendous form in the training in Bissam Abbey decided that Keegan was the man, although I think originally decided he wouldn't be in the side, and Keegan has repaid that gamble with the goal. Here's Peter Barnes. 45 minutes left. Hughes forward now to Bob Latchford. Brooking, Bonetti bearing down on him. Finding Trevor Cherry. Boston again towards Latchford. Here's Bonetti again. Made time for himself there. Wilkins, that wasn't the header he meant. Dave Watson to Phil Neal. Watson again. Wilkins. In went Watson once more. Facchetti. Antonioni. Sala. Zaccarelli. Free kick. Well, I didn't hear the Italian fans. Italia. About 6,000 of them in here. At times before the start, it sounded like 26,000. They've been silenced to a large degree in that first half by England's uh, performance. Dave Watson up well again. Brooking in. Neil, the short ball for Hughes. It's a free kick to Italy. first half as Jack Charlton pointed out when the Italians were clearly rattled and very nervous they've had uh, 10 minutes in which to compose themselves and I would have thought Enzo Berzot their excellent manager would have done an awful lot of work in that Italian dressing room here's Tardelli Watson stopping that one there here's Keegan Hughes Walkins again. 
Trevor Cherry. It's a goal kick. Well, certainly if England fail to qualify, it won't be for the want of effort and skill on this night. I think maybe you have to go back, not even to uh, the 2-0 defeat in Rome a year ago, but more maybe just to a 2-1 victory here against Finland, when England would have hoped for so much more, and a mere 2-0 defeat in Luxembourg, when England really needed much more. Those were the nights, I think, when maybe uh, we were hustled out of the World Cup, if in fact that's what's going to happen. Causio stopped again by Dave Watson. Trevor Brooking now for Ray Wilkins. Back where it's safe to Ray Clements. Got to pick up that momentum of the opening quarter of an hour, 20 minutes of the first half when we scored our goal and when we had them distinctly rattled. Now Watson coming forward. Latchford. Back for Dave Watson. Played there towards Brooking, but he was very well marked indeed, very well covered by Benetti. Here's Peter Barnes, and Gentili knew he had to get in quickly. Now it's Calcio. Gentili. Born in Tripoli, in fact, a North African mother. Very strong fullback indeed. This is Tardelli, Keegan after him. That's going to be a goal kick. No, it's not. It's going to be a free kick to Italy. Foul by Kevin Keegan on Tardelli. I was a bit surprised at Kevin making a challenge for that ball there because he had played the player into an area where he couldn't go anywhere anyway. And all he's done is give away an unnecessary free kick. Which uh, Casio is about to take, number seven. Antonioni just ahead of him there. Trevor blocking the England player. Casio's free kick. Ettinger couldn't get ahead to it. Keegan. Neil to Watson. Hardly put a foot wrong, Dave Watson. Here's Steve Popple. Wilkins. Hughes. Pushing men forward again, England. Italy pulling everybody back. Brooking, another of those crosses. Latchford up well that time. Now, will it come this time for Hughes? He just couldn't turn back to get the angle enough. For a moment, that looked distinctly promising when Bob Latchford won that ball in the air. Point of fact, uh, Latchford has been so very well watched by Mozzini. That time, Latchford got it in the air. Keegan couldn't. Well, in fact, he just turned it on. And for a moment, you wonder whether Hughes could do it. In the end, he couldn't. Causio. Understanding there, Peter Barnes, turning Gentili one way, turning him another. Here's Brooking, Benetti closing on him. Well, that won't come to Wilkins, Antonioni was there, it didn't quite uh, have enough on it. Antonioni to Zala. Cut out well by Coppola. But an Italy throw. Wilkins. Wilkins. Keegan, very busy again up front, making a run towards the left. Brooking finding Barnes, and Brooking brought down by Bonetti. I think after that ball had gone. Play on, though, says the Hungarian referee. Wilkins sweeping it to this side to Emlyn Hughes. Brooking still down. Barnes playing it short there for Keegan. But Tardelli had the beating of him. Here's Bettiger. We've seen very little of him. Antonioni. Bettiger. Gentile, back they go, Tardelli, further back, yes, Jack. England at the moment are playing a lot too many balls through the middle of the park and up to people's feet, there are several times in this, this half that Bob Latchford has gone away onto the far post where balls could have been delivered 
and then people get up to support him but instead of that they've played ball through to people I would much rather see them give Bob a chance in the air and get someone up there round about him for his knockers because this is his strength and this is what England really played him for here's Wilkins and now Hughes Tardelli or back heel that didn't come off Brooking versus Benetti Oh, Keegan getting the better of Benetti, tried to play that in, and it still almost came back for him, but... Benetti was certainly hard on his heels again. We're taking the hard way out, we're trying to go through the middle of an Italian defence, which is almost an impossibility the way they played the game. Latchford, a slip there by Italy. And we played men to do the other thing as well. Well, yeah... It, uh they play a sweeper and, and, and then the two man-to-man -man mark on the two forward players and when you're playing the ball into them even if they turn with the ball the sweeper picks it all up right a you've corner got to get past them a corner for England which Peter Barnes is going to take Watson has come sneaking up again Wilkins has gone running in there Zoff came and he went and Facchetti got it uh, away but not very far now Cherry trying to rifle one in there but again an Italian deflection there were so many back there that seemed to be inevitable and uh, the ball played now for Calcio oh Hughes in with a very rash tackle and a good piece of refereeing the advantage there Antonioni that's usually where they can be so dangerous a couple of quick passes that are accurate that time Antonioni wasn't now Peter Barnes and away he goes no, he showed far too much of that to Zaccarelli I think it's about time they brought Peter Barnes off actually because he's getting very tightly marked and he's confusing him a little bit and he's going into all sorts of positions that he shouldn't be going into but he's, making, he's taking up the space that people want to use. To bring on who? Trevor Francis or Stuart Pearson? I would like to see Trevor Francis brought on and played just behind Bob Latchford and get him up there and let Trevor get onto them. But here's Benetti for Italy. Now better go. Benetti, Antonioni, Trevor Cherry, playing that into a safe area, down by this corner flank for Hughes. Again, Italy bringing everybody back, only Bettega is up, here's Brooking, Phil Neal. Almost came through there, Koppel very nearly made something, Hughes and rather Neil tried to make something of it, Latchford here, Wilkins driving one in again, again off an Italian body, here's Emlyn Hughes hustling in, and all they claim, play on said the referee, England in possession now with Ray Wilkins, picking up the pace a bit now, faced by Benetti, Watson, trying to go through that middle there and just look how many blue shirts are there Phil Neal, Ray Wilkins, spread it wide here we are, Peter Barnes nope you see that was a typical example of an England cross at the moment they're dropping everything in short and Bob Latchford had got about five yards away behind the uh, Roberto, the Mazzani is it? Mazzini Mazzini had got a, a long way behind him and that ball had to clear him to give Bob some sort of a chance to, to make him work. Casio. Benetti. Casio again. Well, he got past Cherry. No mean feat. Tricky little winner. Antonioni with the shot. Not much to spare there for England. Casio can always cause trouble if you get him a bit of room. And look how quickly an economy of effort there by Antonioni, but he was wide. Spending 
message has just been delivered from somebody on the England bench down to a player. Maybe there's a slight change coming up. In the meantime, it's Calcio stopped in his tracks by Trevor Cherry. Free kick to Italy. You see, Emlyn on that last ball Emlyn got from the goalkeeper, it takes him five minutes to get up to the back to the first player. And it gives the Italians an opportunity to get everyone back behind the ball. He's got to fill that space a lot quicker than he's doing at the moment. Otherwise, it, it, it slows the whole build-up up. Facchetti with the Italian free kick. Little chip there towards Bettigo. Watson read that well. Barnes. Gentili, he's gone past it. Now. Well, Bonetti was right in there as well, but he tried to take the ball on. And it takes some player to do that and win. But it was a good try by Peter Barnes. Well, Ron Greenwood went to uh, Berlin to watch West Germany beat Italy. And he saw wingers there unsettle them and beat them. And I think that's the reason he chose both Barnes and Koppel today. But as Jack was saying, we are simply in this second half at any rate, not playing enough down the wings. Tardelli, Gentili, no prizes for guessing where that's going. Coming up to a quarter of an hour of the second half gone, and England really now desperate for that second breakthrough. Here's Kevin Keegan, again Bonetti after him, coming in down, free kick. Kevin Keegan taken really quite a buffeting here tonight by uh, Tardelli in the first half and here by Bonetti. Take it to England. Taken already, booking here. And Bonetti forcing that error. Here's Tardelli. Fast for Bonetti. Casio. Hughes is header. Wilkins. Cherry. 15 minutes of the second half gone. 1 0 to England. Kevin Keegan the scorer. Phil Neal wide for Bob Latcher. Now close, Mozzini is sticking with him. Bettiger. Game at the moment lost a little of its momentum. And that's often when the Italians are most dangerous. When you think it's reached a dull patch, they snap out quickly with a couple of accurate passes and cause an awful lot of damage. But let's hope now Brooking can do the same sort of thing at the other end. Wilkins. Keegan. Wilkins with a shot. Well, you just want one of those to go to an English foot. Watson again. Planting the long ball forward. There's Hughes right in there. What a good header by Hughes for Keegan. Back for Emlyn Hughes again. Inside this time for Koppel. Free kick. Tardell is the man again. Number two. the team again Benetti with his back to the kick organizing that all with Zoff a short for Emlyn Hughes oh, there was another one now this could be very dangerous Antonioni finding himself up there almost alone Claudio Zala here's Zala again taking the pass from Zaccarelli Antonioni Zala on the 
far side is an offside against Mozzini who come up quickly. That was unfortunate, that England free kick there. Because Phil Neal had, had gone round the back and Bob Latchford had brought the marker in. And it, I couldn't understand why he played a square ball there. The ball had to go deep and far at the, at the wide in the far post. Phil had come into a great position and have got to look for these areas. We haven't had one ball clear anybody at the far post yet to give any, any sort of a chance. Not at the moment, playing with quite the same conviction we played in the first half. Not at all, and we're trying to play through the centre of the Italians instead of getting the ball wide and letting the people get the ball in. We caused them all sorts of problems in the first half by playing the ball little Steve Coppel, letting him take someone on and then whack balls across the face or play balls in. Well, let's hear, see if Keegan can do anything. Can he get this ball across the face? No, he can't because uh, Facchetti was there. But it's a corner for England. Giacinto Facchetti, number six. England! England! England's corner. Good looking one there. Zoff, good, safe, clean catch. And taking about 12 strides as well. But only four are allowed. That rule came from the continent, that four step rule, you know, Brian. And we seem to be the only ones that, that take any notice of it at all. Certainly took more than four there. He's done it all again. He's taken five or six, seven, eight, nine, ten there. Here's Hughes. That's Facchetti. Casio. Zaccarelli. Now Peter Barnes. Trevor Cherry right up there. Bob Latchford. A little on the deep side there. Now Phil Neal. Barnes trying to get himself involved. There's a little bit of space there. A back heel by Wilkins. Here's Brooking now. Now from Matchford Tone. He can and he thumps it well wide. Broke it. Turn by Latchford. Thumped it well enough. Couple and Barnsley have changed wings at the moment. Benetti. A free kick to Italy. 20 minutes of the second half gone. Zaccarelli. Nicely turned back this time for Zala. In first time and overhead. Oh, in fact, it came off Bedeker's head after the overhead by Calcio. Phil Neal. Passing just not accurate enough there to find Kevin Keegan. Tardelli, the short ball this time for Bedeker. Zala. Antonioni. No nonsense from Hughes. I'm sure you've noticed right the way through the game, those fences right around Wembley now. Have to come, of course. Salah. Getting it going with a 1-2, and Steve Popper was in there. He's had a good first international, Steve Popper, particularly in the first half, when he uh, did all the things that were right and that were expected of him. Here's uh, Ray Wilkins. No, it's Edmund Hughes. Now Wilkins. Neil. Remember, we want really another couple of goals. Leading at this moment, 1 0. Here's Phil Neal. That's the cross towards Keegan, but let it come for Copper. Hughes. Well, there's somebody wide on the far side. I think it's Ray Wilkins, in fact, but it's Phil Neal who's going to lift another of those centres in. We're not getting to the byline at all, but there's the cross going in towards Keegan. That would have caused off problems. Well, Cherry attacking the number 15, Zala, and here's Latchford. Well done, Cherry, and here he is again. 
And Bonetti getting it away. And it came far too quickly for his liking to Bob Latchford. Still showing no signs of getting to the byline, Jack. In fact, we're beginning to hoist those rather lazy crosses in from uh, much deeper than that. Well, yeah, but the Italians aren't coming out and playing people offside, so you'll get away with them as long as you put challenge in at the end of them. And the England crosses have not been anywhere near deep enough to cause them any sort of problems. They're allow dropping ball short and allowing the Italians to come and attack the ball. On the odd occasion like that one there, where, where someone was put under challenge, the ball dropped off to Steve Koppel. This is what we've got to look for. Benetti coming through, Benetti coming right through, and Watson, great form again by him. Here's Latchford, Brooking coming up quickly, short for Koppel, got Phil Neal again, wide on the right. There's the cross coming in towards Keegan, he tried one of those little backward header of his. Feet too high there by Fred Brooking, and a free kick to Italy. Just over 20 minutes to go. Somebody warming up, in fact, one of the England substitutes warming up in the tunnel. If we can pick him up on the far side there. In a moment, we... Here's Calcio. Cross coming in there, Clements coming for it, he had to fist that one away, and it's a goal kick. That's the first cross that Dave Watson has hesitated on. He got a caught in two minds there. Here's coming forward again. Now Cherry. Cross there towards Keegan, and Zaccarelli, number eight for Italy. Watson. Cut out well by Wilkins. Brooking. Looks a bit like Stuart Pearson to me. Who is the sub warming up for England? Cherry turning it in towards Bob Latchford. He's won it in the air, but there's Tardelli again, but it's a corner for England. That's Twin about that's about the first one that's gone deep enough for Bob to compete for, and he's been waiting for that one all night. There's Stuart Pearson. He'll be on in a moment. Get a corner. Peter Barnes is going to take it. Well, there was certainly an Italian defender well within 10 yards there. It had to be taken again. It's Gentile, number three. I think it might well be Bob Latchford who's coming off, number nine. Looking. Oh! Knocked over the top by Sofran Watson. Well, what a game he's having. Done everything right at the back and very nearly got the second goal that mattered. Caught that well on the volley and Zoff, superb push away. Now, England's corner. Brooking with it. And the Italians were determined not to let any progress be made there by England. About four of them went for that ball. Antonioni now for Casio. Keegan play on, he's played some good advantages this Hungarian referee and here's Keegan again Brooking calling for the ball ahead of him and Tardelli getting in and knocking it away throw to England it's Bob Latchford is coming off they brought Stuart Pearson to the high line but Brooking has taken the throw Keegan brought down but again the referee says play on, Antonioni away for Italy Wilkins, a nice piece of skill. Hold it. 
Brooking in some space, except that Bonetti is after him. Well, Brooking might have the better of him yet. Oh, took him down from behind. You can't let that go on. Well, ain't Bonetti, Bonetti really got away with that? Bediger versus Watson. Here's uh, Casio. And on the far side, it's Salah. Well, the England's ball, a little touch there by Wilkins for Koppel. Koppel going on. Antonioni finding Gentile. Still Stuart Pearson can't get on. Tardelli. Surprise of what a load of rubbish. I can't believe that that's aimed at England. But here's Hughes. Sala there. And now England rather Italy coming away with Antonioni with Calcio away on the right. Cherry coming across to cover, still with Calcio. And a little cross there. And Phil Neal getting the better of Bettiger. The linesman's flag was up for offside. And now there's a chance for Stuart Pearson to come on. And away goes Bob Latchford. Well, I feel a little bit sorry for Bob being the one to come off in this game. Because he's never been served in the way that, he's, that he likes. If they put him there for to do a job, they should have given him the opportunity. Unfortunately... I think Ron recognises the fact that they're playing balls through the feet now and Stewart's a better player at that. Well, there's a Manchester United combination as Pearson finds Koppel. Keegan again for Koppel. Free kick to England. Fouled by Zeccarelli. Some lusty cries of England still coming out from Wembley as Peter Barnes floats it in towards Keegan and on the far side was Pearson and Zoff gathers the ball as it went into the air off Mozzini and I think uh, Pearson unfairly impeding uh, Dino Zoff and that's going to be a free kick to the Italians quarter of an hour to go So as we come to the last 15 minutes, Stuart Pearson. Well, Enzo bears up the surprise that Pearson wasn't playing as he, uh, Ron Greenwood had picked Koppel. Now that Manchester United combination is there, hopefully to do something for England in the 15 minutes that remain. Here is Koppel. Oh, well, 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 pulled back again there by Benetti. Grabbed him round the waist. They're certainly effective at it, Brian, you know. You've got to smile a little bit because they, they're past master at that. Another England player warming up on the far side. Cheryl Francis. So difficult, of course, for a player to get into the tempo of a game like this with less than a quarter of an hour to go. Well, Steve Coppel, all right. And a free kick for England. Brookie, loading it in. Keegan again, beaten in the air. Barnes, the little touch that didn't begin to come off. Casio, Antonioni, looking right back there, doing some challenging. Benetti was right in there, Zala's right in there. Now this is a dangerous moment until Hughes came across there. Look at Koppel getting back there too. 
and it's Koffel who finds Ray Clements. Great piece of retrieving there by Steve Koffel. Now Wilkins. Keegan. Free kick to Italy. Is off. Tardelli is a bit lucky to get away with that. It was a bit of obstruction from Kevin, but he's committing himself to win tackles on the wrong side of the player. And if the ball goes through, he's left himself out of the game, and he's got away with it on two occasions in this game where he could have been punished for it. Here's Ray Wilkins. About 11 minutes to go now. Nice touch there from Pearson for Peter Barnes still Barnes rather rash challenge there by Emlyn Hughes and Antonioni and the ball falling for Casio and here's Zala Benetti right up there again loves to surge forward in these situations here's uh, Benetti but this time beaten by Phil Neal of Liverpool Keegan right up ahead of him. Not a good pass. What a pity Phil Neal didn't pick up Keegan, who was making uh, such a good position away on that right touchline. Gentili to Facchetti. Now Zaccarelli, Bettega. Zaccarelli, Casio's up. Here's Sala. Zaccarelli, Sala. Has he got the beating of Hughes? He has, but not of Wilkins. And Watson, England's best player probably on the night, getting the ball up towards Kevin Keegan. Tardelli, though. Zaccarelli. Fired after that was Brookings' coolness, and he had plenty of that to put it under off. It took just enough time to make sure he hit the ball where he wanted to hit it. A lot of players would have dashed at that, but not Trevor. He's got a lot of control in those situations, and he did exactly right. But now, Jack, we need another one. Yes, and I think we may get it as well. The Italians will maybe start the antics again. It's and I nine, think upset them. nine minutes to go. And nine minutes that can mean so much if England, against all the odds, are yet to qualify. Remember, if they get one more goal, it means the Italians must beat Luxembourg by three when they come to Rome. All right, they should do it, but at least it sets them a target. As it stands at the moment, they still need only a 1-0 win in that deciding game in Rome. Unless England can pierce them once more in the minutes that remain. Here's Facchetti. And Coppo back to Zoff. I think the surprising thing about that goal was to find a man in a white shirt in so much space in an Italian penalty area. Almost certainly the fullback was to blame. Uh, Tardelli. He stood and played him on side. In fact, if he had to come up just a yard, Trevor Wooden was almost certainly offside because he got to that position very early. Watson leaping again, that time beaten in the air. Back it goes to Ray Clements. Now, seven minutes left. And England waiting to bring on Trevor Francis. Watson. Wilkins. Brooking. really has been a superb Brooking-Keegan combination here. Brooking who slanted in that cross for Keegan's header for the first goal. Keegan who put that really beautiful pass in for Brooking to score the second. Play on. 
Hughes. Neal. Cherry. Come a long way. Keegan there with his head. Can Wilkins get in behind for Ketty? He can't. And Zaccarelli across there to stop any progress that Koppel might make. England's throw, and they want to bring on the substitute. They're trying to attract the referee's attention to the fact that Trevor Francis is coming on. And it's the number seven, Kevin Keegan, who's going off. I think you'll find that Fischetti will go off fairly quickly as well. He seems to have pulled a hamstring. And Keegan was limping as well, so clearly it was a knock that Kevin got that caused him to go off. Facchetti, in fact, is in a lot of trouble, the number six. In fact, he's tried to stop the play, and the Italians will bring on their second substitute. There he is. It's a hamstring. I've been a little bit disappointed in Fischetti, and I'm not surprised that he's going off, actually, even though he has pulled a hamstring. He's given the ball away a tremendous amount in this game for a player of his calibre. I would have thought he would have controlled it at the back just a little bit better than he has done. And it's Kukaredo who's coming on. But still five minutes to go. Trevor Francis. The ball breaking for the Italians. And back to Zoff. Neil with a header. Dave Watson. Oh, what a good ball by Watson for Wilkins and superbly taken by him. Emlyn Hughes charging forward again for England. Trying to get a 1-2 going and Hughes was almost through there. Stopped by Benetti. Casio stopped by Neil. Here's Francis. England now really on the move again. Stopped that time though by Tardelli. Watson, Hughes, still going to press everybody forward now. And summon up one big last effort now, England. Watson, playing it wide for Cherry. Crowd a little bit impatient, wanting England to get that ball into that Italian penalty area. Neil. Francis. England's throw. There are many spaces in there, Brian, for people to play balls back through now. The Italians have pulled everybody back, and they've all picked up in spare men in there as well. There's the cross going in again. Brooking trying to glance it on with his head. Watson. Not only are, is uh, Ray Clements the only man in the England side, in fact, there's hardly anybody in the first ten yards of the Italian half. There's Watson. Everything concentrated now in that third of the field as England, with a matter of three minutes left, looking for that vital third goal. Brookings going through. He couldn't quite turn it back, but he's got a corner. And England now have planted everybody forward. Brookings with the corner. England roll the crowd. Deep one there, Watson with the head out, but straight into the arms of Zoff. Goodness, if anybody deserves a goal, it's Dave Watson on his performance tonight. Zoff getting it away. Brooking, challenging there with Cousio. And winning that challenge and finding Hughes. Now with Wilkins. Pearson, Francis, the two English substitutes. Oh, body check again by Benetti. Free kick for England on the corner of that Italian penalty area. A little under two minutes to go, plus injury time. Gentili almost on the ball there. Wilkins with the free kick. Maybe taking it quicker than uh, the referee wanted. Yes, it'll have to be taken again. And every Italian player back in his own penalty area. 
Wilkins again with that cross. Watson trying to get to the far side. Zoff with a fist getting it away for Italy. Good fisted clearance that in fact by Zoff. He got a lot of distance on it when Italy really needed it. Popper with the throw for England. Francis. Salah, nice little touch. Here's Tadelli. Oh, he's gone past Enlin Hughes. Sala, Casio, that's a part of the Italian game that is much better than the England game tonight, the breaking out of defence when they get someone free, they close the gap up between the defending players they're trying to go at much more quickly than in fact England do. Here's Koppel, in the last minute of the game now, plus injury time, Francis, In trouble keeping his feet, Trevor Francis, since he came on. Neil playing it back for Watson. So little time left. And in fact, the final whistle has gone. He hasn't played one second of injury time, would you believe? Well, well, well. And England have won by two goals to nil. Kevin Keegan, the scorer of the first goal in the first half. Trevor Brooking adding a second in the second half. Meaning that Italy need to beat Luxembourg by a solitary goal in Rome to qualify for the World Cup but a good performance by England tonight we're going to take a short break and after that break we'll be getting the views again of Jack of Alan Mallory and we hope of Ron Greenwood as well we'll be right back with you Nothing positive about him at all. And then, and then he's passing it and he knocks it in and they cut it out three times. Very disappointing. He, he, does, he does that all the time, you know, and when the Italians went to a break, the first 20, 30 yards, they fall on the ball. If the space they go with him, he runs into someone with the ball. And it releases some of that effort. One minute to us. Commit someone. He's got to yeah. just re knock the ball if you bring the defender just. You may what? I can't hear. He's holding him there. But if you get the goal. Oh, you may open the bars run, okay. Ball. Which Wilkins went on the run on the outside, Danny. Yep. Okay. Okay. That's the only thing we really run. I can't really positive run. If you don't do it in this community, How long have we got then? How long have we got? How long do you think I've got? Four? Three hours, five hours. Yeah. 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 Oh Christ, four including Ron Greenwood, so we've got to get a move on. <laughs> 